good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, or good evening, whatever time of day or time zone you're in. So happy to be here with you, Gerald King. And Gerald is a guest that I'm excited and anxious to interview. He is getting interested in working in the business of marketing and so young and handsome and has all of this future ahead of him. So I'm dying to find out. You're probably the youngest guest I've ever had, Gerald. Oh, wow. So thank you for being with me thank today. So I'd, I want to hear your story because I'm sure that you have a story worth telling. So please, how can we start? What, what is your story? How have you gotten into this business of marketing? Well, we could start back... Uh probably around senior year of high school. Okay. I was probably about 17 or 18 when I first got interested in entrepreneurship and business. Nice for, yeah, good. Yeah, and you know, around that time, it's a little difficult because you have so many different influences that are pushing you in a bunch of different directions. Mm -hmm. So whether it's getting a full-time job or going to school and going to school for four years and working on a degree, then getting a job, with all those, you know, voices of influence, it's hard to really decide and hone in on what you want to do. So how do you decide? <laughs> I mean, what, because there's so many opportunities out there and try some, you know, your path might be a little jagged at first, but tell me, what's the journey? I, I think that's exactly right. I think it's trying, you know, trying a bunch of different things and seeing what you do like. Um, starting with, obviously, like something that you're maybe passionate about. Um, but if not, just trying a bunch of things you think you might like and in that you might eventually find it. So when I first started getting interested in entrepreneurship, I just said, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and try it. Okay, good. So Joseph Campbell <laughs> says, follow your bliss. And to me, that means following what you're passionate about. And then if you enjoy it, then it's not really work. And you can enjoy it while you're doing it kind of thing, right? Right. So what is blissful for you? What, what is your passion? What, what are you going to do? What is, what is the journey for you? The passion with entrepreneurship for me is relationships. And in entrepreneurship and business, you get to meet so many different people mm -hmm. in so many different lanes and industries that are doing a bunch of different stuff. So if I was never interested in entrepreneurship, I probably would, never would have met Tariko. Right. I never would have met you in that case because I would have never met Tariko. So right. it's, it's something where you're able to build a bunch of different relationships and then you're able to use your passions and uh, desires for, for life itself to kind of um, just use other people to build on that. Okay, great. So basically it's being open to every single opportunity that presents itself and being aware that the window might be open. It might be a narrow opening, but always looking and saying yes to that opening. Am I understanding you correctly? Yes. Okay. Yep. Just seeing, seeing a door that may be opening and just walking through it. Perfect. Great. Okay. So you said that you're interested in marketing and you want to do marketing. Tell me what your plan is. You have a business plan all set up on that path? Yeah, well, I have a, a business running currently. Okay. So um, primarily in the industry of real estate currently, real okay. estate and fitness. Um, so real estate, fitness, and then marketing, all three of those. Okay. Marketing for real estate okay. and fitness. Yep. Okay. So your, your brokerages, your real estate agents, right now they, they, they need help in, in the area of marketing and uh, social media, things like that, understanding how to leverage those to help drive their business. So what are you doing specifically, if I can ask? What are you doing to help the real estate business? So in the real estate business, um, I give the example that I just talked to with a realtor, and my grandparents, they just sold their house. They live in Rhode Island, and they're, one of the primary reasons that they sold their house at this time is obviously one, the market's high, but two, their realtor kept following up with them. And the realtor built a relationship with them, going back to one of my favorite words. Um, and because of that, they decided, okay, let's sell our house, our house now. And for realtors and real estate brokerages, most of them don't, aren't really good at following up. So follow up and relationship are the two words I'm hearing you repeat that are probably really important if you want to be successful. Yes, yep. Building a relationship with somebody and following up with them is the number one key to getting their business in the future because most people won't make a decision the first time you get in contact with them. Mm -hmm. But after three, four, five, six times, 
then eventually they'll end up pulling the trigger. Right, right. So it's those touch points, and sometimes it's a phone call, sometimes it's face to face, sometimes it's a postcard. It's that continual effort and energy that you need to bring to the relationship. Correct. Nice. Really good. Okay, so your grandparents <coughs> sold their house. Now what are they going to do? Because I know the market is high, but where are we going to, where are they going to go? What's happening next for them? Yeah, so it's it's funny because they didn't expect it to be selling that quickly. Mm -hmm. um, but since the market's high right now, it, it sold in a couple days. So they might be, you know, moving to North Carolina, which is where they're building their house. Oh, wow. A little bit sooner than they thought. <laughs> So that was a little bit of a shock, yeah. So that's it great. Was. So you help them move on their way and move their journey forward. So that's one thing that you can say that you can be really proud of already in your young career. Do you have a name for your business? Yeah, my name is uh, for the business is Zero One Zero Media. Zero One Zero Media. Correct. Okay. Yep, okay. Correct. So if I if I Google Zero One Zero Media, I can learn all about your work and who you touch and all of that. Yeah, th the, the theme of the business is really about creating your own reality in, in your personal life, but also in your business life. Okay. So you said you grew up in New London, always from New London, yes. kind of these are your roots and you must know a lot of people in this town, right? I know a decent amount of people, yes. Sure, yeah, but yeah, there are people who move in and move out and you meet people. So how do you network? How do you build those relationships? What are your steps? So I think it's what we mentioned before, it's about when you're seeing a door open, mm -hmm. you take it. So. Um, I'm also very passionate about youth and okay. youth development. Okay. So I had an opportunity to become a paraprofessional. Oh, nice. Yeah. So you met all kinds of, what grade level? Were you middle school, high middle school? Middle school. Middle yeah. school. And those are the kids that are kind of bouncy is how I like to describe them. Yes, they're all over the place. <laughs> but those are, it's the perfect time to, to touch a, a young child and, um, you know, make an impact on their life, you know, because there's so many different voices in their heads that's going on so many different influences that if you want them to become successful you have to kind of guide them and gear them in a good direction for them right so what you're doing for yourself simultaneously is what you can do and build within that young adult that how old 13 14 or not that old like 12 13 how old typically yeah typically around 10 to 14, but 10 to 9, 14. 9 to 13, something like that. Okay, yeah. okay. So you're building that and helping them to understand and have uh, a good sense of balance and, again, that North Star where they need to be looking and guiding themselves and making good choices. Right, because they have passions and desires as well. Of course. The, the problem is they just don't know how to get there. Mm. They don't know how to reach what they actually want. And us as adults, we have at least some idea of how to get there we have to be willing to help them. Nice, nice. And I think in helping them, did you find this? I found when I worked with you that the more I helped them, the more I helped myself too. It, there was a sense of satisfaction and uh, personal strength that grew out of me that I also instilled in them. So it was kind of a symbiotic relationship. Yeah, I agree. You learn, you learn things about them and you learn things about yourself. Absolutely. And well, I good hope. for you. But, uh, okay, so your uh, day job is, uh, well, I guess it's actually, you said 3 to 11. Your, your night job is working at EB. Yep. And so you're doing that kind of to sustain yourself probably while you explore your entrepreneurial. And the thing that I notice about entrepreneurs is the tenacity. You are so determined. You have to be so determined for what it is that you're doing. So your marketing, you're, you're constantly, are you doing different meetups? How do you actually, it's tough with COVID, I know, how do you meet with different people? How do you bring it out? Yeah, so it's all about what uh, the other person is comfortable with. So if they're comfortable with in-person, you might have an in-person, you know, social distance type meeting. Um, but now a lot of days everything is transferred over to Zoom or, or Google Meets. So it's a lot of video calls and chats or at least phone calls and chats to meet and speak with people about you know marketing and mm -hmm. entrepreneurship mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you're going to be able to develop this in so many people tell me more about youth though and the whole idea of youth what are some things that we can do that you see that are available some issues with youth and then maybe some resources how could we link those two together 
I think the big thing with youth is finding out what they like okay. to do and meeting them there. Okay. Um, I think uh, sports is probably, you know, especially in this town, it's a big sports town. Okay. Sports is something where you can get a lot of people together mm -hmm. and a lot of youth together. The youth will come out to, to play at least and that's where you could at least build on a relationship and meet these youth and find out what their interests are and what they want to do. Okay, um, so imagine that sports, and there's so many different sports, do you find that there's a sport, favorite sport? Would it be like ultimate frisbee or is it basketball, soccer, ba which, which sport do you think is the number, like top two or three? I think basketball is probably the top one. Okay. I think you've, we've seen a lot of basketball tournaments that have been held, um, whether that's Toby May or, or Bartlett. Um, there's been tournaments have been held and a lot of people have come out to those. So that's something where you're able to see all those different youth and you just have to work on building a relationship with them. Okay, so then the, the kids come out, the youth come out, and they're doing the sport, they're doing the basketball. Are you actually doing skill and drill? Are you helping them with setting the ball up and dribbling and passing and all those activities and things that are part of it? Is that, or is it always just a tournament? Because I feel like sometimes, you know, I, I study ballet a lot, so a lot mm -hmm. of times it's that time at the bar where you're just working on your hand position and plies and, and uh, you know, your plies and releves and ballet and your uh, pirouettes, that kind of thing, your turns. But in basketball, I'm thinking that it's a lot more than just the tournament. The tournament gets you excited, but what about the steps along the way? Yeah, I think there's opportunity for those skills training uh, in camps. And I think that's something where even myself has thought about how do we build something like that in this community? How do we get the resources and the people to come around and, and build a skills camp? Well, I think the money is going to be available with ESSER grants coming because of COVID. You know, some COVID relief money is going to be coming. So I think you should get your plans together so that you could have this dynamic summer youth camp. And, and it could be not just uh, basketball. It could be a whole number of things. But, you know, you need to follow that passion and find it out what it is that you think you'd want to do. Yeah, I think that would be great and be an opportunity to, even if, you know, kids you know, don't want to pursue basketball in the future after that or, or another sport. There is something they do want to pursue and the only way you're going to find out is if you, if they show up and they're there and you're able to build a relationship and talk to them. Well, even if they don't become professional basketball players, you know, and, and what percentage of that happens, right? Point zero five <laughs> or something. I mean, very small percentage. Very small percentage. So, but I think what you're doing though is you're building a team. You're building uh, consistency, showing up, being on time, being ready, you know, in their uniform, being eager, saying yes to the experience and the opportunity and the relationship and not always being first, you know, so, so many of those life skills is what you are starting to do with what you're doing. So I think that's really commendable. Yeah, I'd say, and all those things that you listed is something that I've learned growing up and playing basketball is, you know, one of my main sports that I enjoy playing. Um, you learn those team building, those communication skills, the dedication skills, showing up on time um, and being okay when you lose. Mm -hmm. and I think, you know, failure to success isn't just a straight line. It's, it's up and down. You're going to fail. You're going to succeed. You're going to take two steps back. But it's about whether you move forward still. That's, that's exactly right. When I was in the schools, I used to keep a lot of data. and. Back when I was in school, um, some people wouldn't keep data and they would always just do like the upward trajectory of a diagonal line. But what you said is so true. It's always this up and down like a zigzag that goes when you are succeeding. You don't, you have to have that consistency and do it. What we used to say was three different ways, three different, in three different places and in multiple times. So having that opportunity to practice under different settings. So like you said, going to Toby May, going to an outdoor park, going to another place and then playing with different groups of people would help to develop that skill. So that's great. Right. So you said sports and you said youth. Are there other components that you're thinking about that you're trying to develop? So I think aside from sports, there's, uh, in this town, I'd say particularly, there's music. There's a lot of music opportunities. Nice, so I think nice. There's a lot of youth that want to become artists nice. someday. 
So whether it's, you know, they're singing or they want to produce music, I think there's opportunity to build a program around that that help you hone in on, on that skill and passion that they might have. Okay, so you're not talking, so you're talking pretty much the performing arts when you're saying art, so really the music. And are you musically talented yourself? Is this something that's in your wheelhouse? Uh, slightly, uh -huh. a little bit. I do play the guitar and I am currently learning uh, the piano as well. Oh wow, so those are great instruments. And the piano I never had the opportunity to learn. I guess I could. My brother is learning as an adult, so it's not like I couldn't. But, um, you know, so that's, that's one thing. If you have that in your wheelhouse as a young person, I think that makes all the difference. And music, so basketball and guitar and singing. Are there people who can be good coaches for these paths, for people who want to do this sort of thing? Yeah, I think there's, there's people and there's resources out there. Um, there's a lot of musically inclined people in this area. You could just go to the, you know, the talent show and there's youth, but there's also adults that are helping those youth. So and tell me about the talent show. I don't really know about that. So the, the youth talent show is where I think it was put together by Frank Colmenares and a couple others, individuals that um, saw this idea for uh, youth to be able to show their skill and it's held at the Guard Arts Theater and you'll get a bunch of, you'll get artists, you'll get dancers, you'll get musicians, um, and they're able to perform in, f in front of the community. Um, and I think you see a lot of different young individuals that, are, that have this amazing voice. And for me, it's like, where do they go after that? Mm -hmm. Where do they go after they do this performance? Mm -hmm. Do they just forget about it and think that they're not gonna get anywhere? Or are they actually you know, moving towards their goal that's in their head. So right. putting together a program or something that is going to help them and guide them towards uh, that career path is something that I think it's important for youth. Well, I think that's beautiful, and I love that. I <coughs> used to have a friend. She, she was an entrepreneur, and she had this amazing voice. So she started this company called Tunagram, kind of like, you know, tuna in a can kind of thing, but tuna okay. gram, like a telegram kind of thing, was mm -hmm. the play on words. And she would, I hired her to come for my husband's 40th birthday party one year, knocked on the door, she wore a tuxedo, I think she brought a bouquet of flowers, just really sweet, and just belted out this song, happy birthday, mm -hmm. I mean, that kind of thing just enlightened so many people and he still talks about his 40th birthday party that we had for him, and it was a surprise. But, of course, one of the little kids uh, <laughs> kind of broke the news, unfortunately. No. But, I mean, that would be the kind of thing that somebody could say, hey, we could do this. And I think that we need people who will enlighten other people. And then I'm, I'm thinking, too, Jeannie Siegel at The Guard is fabulous. And she has done a lot of work with youth outreach and youth programs. So if you could connect with her, that would be a really good avenue or access for you and I, I'm thinking just to be on that stage at the Guard Arts that's pretty phenomenal yeah I, it's I def it definitely is phenomenal and um, it also could be scary too so I think uh, helping kids and youth navigate that scary portion of it absolutely because once they get after that once you get over fear fear is probably the number one biggest reason some, uh, somebody doesn't do anything right getting over fear is gonna set a youth a uh, person up or anybody up to succeed in whatever they want to do once they get over that hump that they're no longer afraid of failing of what other people might think uh, once you get over that then sky's the limit for absolutely yeah so that stage fright is real you know people get up there and maybe they freeze or something but the more we normalize that situation the more opportunity to, that you have to be in that moment and forget about what you know people are watching maybe someone's videotaping whatever you just get past it and you love it and enjoy it and get into doing what you're meant to be doing i think and and bringing that out so that's really great right. so good now tell me about create wear you have this t-shirt on and yes <laughs> It's a, uh, so it's, you know, it's our friend Tariko's uh, clothing company. Tariko Satterfield. Tariko Satterfield's uh -huh. clothing company, Create Wear. And basically the, the message or theme is about uh, light and darkness. So it's really about uh, being a light 
even in the darkest times of, of your life, basically. And it's also about creating where you want to go. I like that. Um, so for me, uh, I want to be in a position where I, you know, have a business, I'm able to build relationships, but I'm also, I have freedom. I think money doesn't necessarily drive a lot of people and, mm -hmm. and it doesn't drive me, mm -hmm. but freedom that money brings you does. Mm -hmm. And for me, the freedom that I'm going to be able to have uh, to spend time with family, to build friendships, to build business relationships, to be involved with youth, you know, is going to, is something that drives me. And this t-shirt symbolizes that, it symbolizes creating where I want to go. Nice. Nice. I like that. And what I understand, too, is that every t-shirt that you buy, a certain portion is appropriated for youth to be able to go on and get advanced degrees or college degrees. Is that right? Or pursuing a second degree after high school, whether you can get your license or tell me about that. Yeah, so a uh, program that uh, Tariko Satterfield and I have and, and a few other individuals have been working on is uh, creating a program where youth are able to uh, create, design, and sell uh, t-shirts and it's going to be used for post-secondary education. So nice. if they want to be, you know, a cosmetologist or a mechanic or whatever they might want to do after school, uh, this money is going to, that they sell, a portion of that is going to go towards their post-secondary education and it's going to sit in a bank account for them. Nice, nice. So you're creating an account for them, which I think is really important in the first place. And kids understand a little bit about the world of finance and saving and interest and how it grows. And all of a sudden, you know, as a kid, I remember looking into my account and there were dividends added. And I was like, how did that happen? I didn't put any more money in. So my mom had to sit down and explain it to me. So kind of that naivety that happens, it really helps to get them to know a little bit more about that world. So yeah, and it's something that's not, not taught, unfortunately. Um, the world of finances and the world of making money and how to save it and how to even invest it because that's what you're doing they're earning money they're putting it in a bank account and then they're investing it in their future so those three steps right there is something that's not necessarily taught but it's something that we're going to help teach them through this process of creating a shirt and then selling it and then putting it towards nice. whatever their post-secondary education So is that are. really actually classes that you are conducting, if I'm understanding things correctly? It's almost more like you're having events or, uh, I don't know. It's, it's, they're, they're like cohorts. Okay. So, so there's going to be a group of kids that are creating their shirts. They're going to design them. Um, and then they're going to end up going out and selling them, kind of like what you would do or see in a fundraiser at school nice. to where kids are coming around with that card and they have cookies you want to buy or you know different snacks that oh you'll buy these snacks and for them it's going to instead it's going to be uh, their shirt that they created that it's important to them in some way they're going to of course whether it's it may not say create wear on it it may not it may say you know dream big or something whatever is important to them but they're going to be able to sell these shirts to their family members teachers things like that and a portion of that money is going to go towards, you know, what they want to do after school. I love that. So do you have a space set up? Are you over, like, there's a maker space in town? Are you part of that? Or where are you working to create these products? So right now, uh, Tariko actually creates these shirts at his house. Okay. He has a basement full of this equipment and shirts and things like that. So he creates them um, currently. But... We're hoping to to get more uh, equipment to where he's going to be able to teach the youth how to actually go through the process and make these shirts themselves. Nice. So, nice. So that's a beautiful opportunity, I think, for so many people at so many different <laughs> levels. It's having a purpose. It's expressing what you want to do and then learning the steps along the way to make it possible. So these are all amazing opportunities for so many people. And it's marketing at every level, right? Yeah, it's everything that you do is kind of marketing. You're marketing yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, you're putting yourself out there and you're showing the world, you know, who you are, especially with, you know, social media nowadays, with Facebook, posting on Facebook or Instagram, things like that. Some mm -hmm. people may not 
show who they are specifically on these channels, but I think it's important to be authentic and, you know, actually show your true self when you're posting on social media and you're, you're doing things on social media. So I think that's what draws people's attention is when not just you as an individual, but you as a business, just be authentic and show you who you really are. Yeah, I was hoping you'd say that word authentic. I think <laughs> it's all about being authentic and being transparent too and being open to the vulnerability that it almost takes to succeed because everybody who's been really successful has had that up and down trajectory that you talked about previously. It's never just this diagonal line that goes up and out. It's always this balance. And Yeah, to, for me, I failed plenty of times up until this point. I'm still you know, on that process of growing. I think, you know, I've gone up and, and then I've taken a couple of steps back. But for me, it was never really focusing on those couple of steps back. It was focusing on, okay, what's the next step to overcome to get where I need to go? Right, and right. Who, and who can help me get there? Right. You know, I think there's, I think people need to be able to come together and help each other because we all have different goals and aspirations, but each of us have certain uh, relationships and skills that can help somebody get to where they need to go and in the same time helping themselves get to where they want to go. So I think that's important for us as people and individuals to to partner with each other. Absolutely. And in the end, we all basically want the same things, is my opinion, right? We all want to shelter over our house. We want to have family and relationships. We want to have, you know, good food to eat <laughs> and healthy, clean water to drink and right. all of those things. So in the end, we're, all, we're not all that different. And the more we understand that, I think the better we'll be. So I am so proud of you. I can't wait to have you come Thank back you. in a few years and to see how far you have come and to see all that you've accomplished because Gerald King I think that you have a very bright future ahead of you and I just wish you the best of luck in all that you do so no, I appreciate you. that thank you for having me oh my pleasure